The market reaction fairly mixed this morning in terms of what we're seeing to your numbers. The numbers look pretty much in line with expectations. Looks like the fourth quarter, you've seen a little bit of an acceleration. You're painting a positive picture going forward into 2024. What gives you confidence, given the uncertainty that we're seeing at the moment, to kind of paint that picture, to talk about what you see in 2024? Yeah, good morning. So, yes, I think we had uh, very good results in 2023. Um, we had a very strong leisure uh, demand that uh, we see that uh, it continues during 2024. And also we see the recovery of the corporate uh, traffic. Uh, when we see the health position for the second quarter and the third quarter uh, is positive, even the health yields that uh, we have are above the, the health yields that uh, we had uh, last year. So because of all of that, uh, we are positive about the year. In terms of what you're, what you're watching, geopolitical risk, that looks like it's impacted North America. You've got a cost story, you've got a labour story that you're managing as well. D does, does, is top line going to be strong enough? Is demand going to be strong enough to compensate, to continue to compensate for all of those factors that are going to maybe make life a little bit tougher? Yes, I think so, because uh, we have a transformation program that is delivering results. So, for example, last year we reduced our non-fuel gas by 4.5%. Uh, we increase our unit revenue uh, also. So we continue with a positive trend in demand, as, it, which, as I said before, but also we continue with a transformation plan that is uh, going to help us to manage uh, this uh, inflationary, inflationary yeah. environment that uh, we have. And when we see also the forecast for the fuel price, uh, we see an unstable scenario. You talk about investing in the business. We're not going to get a dividend yet. Mm -hmm. Do you have any kind of clues that you can give me and to where, as to when that dividend might arrive? Because the picture at the moment seems to be that you are, you're making cash, you're making money, and you are investing that back into the business. Is there any pressure from shareholders to return some of that to them, or are they comfortable with the idea that you are investing what you have back into the business, as you say, potentially to drive future returns? I think uh, shareholders, uh, they know that we are, we are generating an important uh, amount of uh, free cash flow. Yep. Uh, last year, 1.3 billion euros. And what we are saying is that this year, even with the investment that we are doing, we are going to continue generating a hu huge amount of uh, free cash flow. And what we have said is that if everything continues as it is, uh, we will uh, give uh, dividends uh, soon. Yeah, but the priority at the moment is investing back into the business. I think we have two priorities, to invest in the business and to generate uh, the cash flows that are needed after uh, the capex that uh, we are investing. In terms of what the summer season is going to look like, how much visibility do you have right now? How, how sort of confident are you in terms of what behaviour is going to be both on the corporate and on the consumer side? So uh, corporate traffic is uh, coming back. Uh, yep. It's true that uh, we are still in levels of 70% uh, in volume uh, if we compare with 2019. But when we see the yields last year, Revenues were like 10 points above the volume. So if uh, the volume was 70%, the revenues were uh, uh, 80%. But now, the first weeks of the year, we see even uh, higher yields in corporate traffic. So volume is coming back, but also yields are higher. And because of that, uh, we can offset the lack of corporate uh, traffic with a very strong uh, premium leisure uh, demand. And that that's continues. the reason of the results. OK. Um, one area, I, I'm just looking through the numbers briefly this morning, one area that looks like it's a little softer than I would have anticipated is, is maybe North America. It, it, you, you flagged that that's a potentially a Middle East factor. Um, is that changing? Has that changed? When are you going to return to Israel? Is that something that is a legacy of last year? Is it continuing into this year? So uh, in the last quarter and the first quarter of 2024, we see the impact of uh, the Middle East uh, conflict uh, because uh, all this started in October and we saw that uh, mainly corporate traffic was affected. No, yeah. lesser traffic, not uh, so strong. Point of sale, US mainly. Uh, we don't see that uh, anymore in the second quarter and the third quarter. We are considering now to come back uh, to Israel. Um, British Airways is considering uh, to fly uh, from April. Uh, Iberia Express, they are going to fly since the 1st of uh, April. Um, Boeing, uh, they are considering to fly there in June. You've got max 10 orders coming through from Boeing, or at least we think you've got max 10 orders yeah. coming through from Boeing. What's your view of what's happening at Boeing right now? Are you confident you're going to get those airplanes? Are you looking at options? How are you going to manage that fleet story? 
Well, first of all, we are working uh, very closely with uh, Boeing to try to see the program that they have in place in order to improve the quality of the aircraft. We are confident uh, that uh, they will achieve it. And then we have 25 uh, DAS-8200 yep. that uh, are going to be delivered starting in 2025. And the DAS-10, uh, still the certification is pending, but uh, even in the case there is a delay because they need to use the resources for other areas of the company, uh, we have the flexibility to move uh, these uh, variants to others. Do you think that is now likely and will that affect capacity? No, uh, for the time being the capacity that we have in our plants is not affected uh, for this situation. Also we don't have the, the DAS-9, that is the aircraft that yeah. uh, had the incident in Alaska. Do you, think your, do you think your passengers are comfortable with the aeroplane? Are you comfortable with Boeing as a, as a supplier? We are comfortable. Uh, I assure they need to work harder and to improve the situation, but uh, uh, we have a Boeing product uh, flying in the, in the group uh, for a long time ago, and we know that they can manage uh, the situation. Are you, are you comfortable with the fleet as it is right now? Do you think, are there any obvious gaps that you think you're going to need to correct? No, I, we don't see any gap. Okay, so, so, so no new aircraft orders coming through. In terms of how you see the macro picture developing over the, the course of the next year, just walk me through that. We're, we're all very much focused today on what the inflation picture is going to look like. Do you get a sense? I, the, the, the aviation industry feels like it's right at the centre of this consumer story mm. right now. Um, everybody's still revenge travelling. They want to go out to restaurants. They want to fly. They want to go mm. on holiday. Is that a, as, as we continue to digest the post-pandemic world... Is this something that is going to change? Are services, do you think service inflation is going to remain sticky for a while? I think we are having this debate uh, since uh, two years ago. Is uh, but the reality is. But it that hasn't changed. No, uh, and th that's true. So the people, the priority now is to have uh, experiences. Uh, so there are other areas where we see that uh, uh, the people they, they are not buying some goods, but uh, it's not affecting us uh, in the same way it's affecting others. So the leisure demand is still very strong. Premium leisure demand continues very strong. Corporate traffic coming back. It's true that uh, some. Uh, uh, type of uh, trips that we had in the past, like uh, day trips uh, are not coming back or, or, or trips where you only spend one night at the destination are not coming yep. back. But uh, in general, uh, we see that uh, this year corporate traffic is coming back uh, in parallel with the growth in capacity. But, but you're not seeing any price pushback. You're not seeing any, any pushback from consumers on, on elevated prices. Prices that the consumers are prepared to accept those kinds of prices. There's no kind of shift in that narrative. But what we see is that the prices we are offering are in line with the inflation we are having. So you can see that uh, we are not doing something very different to other sectors. So I think the, the customer at the end, they, they, they want to fly and the market determines the prices. 